Hi guys, I'm Rochelle and I'm a Ravenclaw and today I'm here to share with you all of the books that I read in August. In August I participated in the Readathon hashtag arc August. I managed to complete 15 arcs in the month of August. These are all arcs that I received from the publisher through NetGalley so I just want to make that very clear up front. I did get all of these for free in exchange for me talking about them on my channel. But yeah, I wanted to be super upfront about that so that none of you thought maybe I was trying to hide this or anything. So I did get all of these for free in exchange for an honest review. So we've got 15 books to talk about so we should jump straight into it. So the first book that I finished for Arc August was A Thousand Nights by E.K. Johnston. I ended up giving this three stars. I was really enjoying this book. I really enjoyed the author's writing style and storytelling. I just found that the pacing for this was a little off for me. The first like three quarters of the book really feels more like a beginning to a series or a duology at least. And then the ending comes across quite rushed after the slow build up of the beginning and I feel like some of the things that were done at the end weren't as substantiated as they could have possibly been in the beginning of the story. A uh, Thousand Nights is a Thousand and One Nights retelling. A terrible lord comes to the village to choose a bride and one sister tricks this lord into taking her instead of her more popular and beloved sister. I was really enjoying this but some of the flaws with the ending meant that I did have to bring it back a little bit. The next thing that I read in Arc August was Dating You Hating You by Christina Lauren which I gave four stars. This story follows a man and a woman who initially meet at a party, hit it off, they're the only single people at this party. It's a costume party, they happen to come dressed in a costume that you could pair off. And then from there they discover they actually get along really well, they really like each other. And then the next morning they come together to discover their two very high profile, very ambitious companies have merged and they are now potentially competing for the one job. While I love this story, and it has a lot of super nerdy pop culture references that I very, very much enjoyed, I felt that the title was a little bit misleading. At no point during the story did I ever feel that either of the main characters genuinely hated each other. I know that they understood that they were rivals, and there's some pranks and stuff that goes on, but I never felt that those were particularly malicious. They were just like funny pranks that were more there to irritate and frustrate rather than actually impede anything. And so I never felt that they got to the actual hate scale of emotions. They were definitely rivals and they were definitely competitive and there was definitely some animosity there at some points. But yeah, I just felt slightly misled by the title. I did really enjoy this, so if this interests you at all, consider picking it up. A content warning, this book does include some sexy times, so if that's not your jam, maybe don't read this. The next thing that I read in the month of August was None of the Above by I.W. Gregorio. I also gave this four stars. This book is about a young woman who is basically got the life set out for her. She's got a great partner, she's potentially got a track scholarship for college, got lots of friends, she's very popular, and then she goes to the gynecologist and discovers that she is actually intersex and this follows all of her struggles with that and how that affects her identity and her life. I will give some trigger warnings for this. The main issue that I had with this is that at some point, and I won't talk about it too much because it is kind of a spoiler, this young lady who is still struggling understanding what is happening and how this affects her identity uh, is 
outed before she is ready to talk about these things and yeah so I want everyone to be aware of that if that is not something that you deal well with maybe skip this. I did really enjoy this story. This is what I was looking for when I read Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides. I did have some small issues with the characterization of the main character. She made some understandable choices but choices that I didn't particularly agree with. I enjoyed this but I didn't love it. The next thing that I read in the month of August was my one and only five star read for the month which was Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Riviera. Everyone here on booktube that has read this book was raving about it. So when I got approved for an art copy I was so excited and that excitement was not misplaced. This story follows a young Puerto Rican lesbian as she comes out to her family and then leaves for a mentorship with this white feminist author and some things happen. Again, there are some trigger warnings for being outed when you're not ready, etc. I really, really loved the author's writing and approach to telling this story, including snippets from this feminist book that the main character had read and she was now basing her life off. There were snippets scattered throughout so you could really read the text and really connect with why she was feeling this way. I loved this. I felt so understood and represented and there was a lot of discussion of sexuality and its fluidity and gender and its fluidity and I found that this was a really important piece of work. It's safe to say I love this book and I will definitely be sending out copies to some feminists. The next thing that I read in the month of August was Witch Hunter by Virginia Boecker which I gave three stars. I really struggled to read this one. There was nothing wrong with the writing or the plot, just that the publisher that I got this arc from, one of their ways to deter and identify piracy is to remove certain letter sequences from the story. My copy just happened to have some very important letter sequences removed. Some letter sequences that show up in a lot of words together. Um, so this actually made it very difficult for me to read and comprehend. There was a lot of time where I had to stop and really contemplate what this word could be to fit in with the general tone and narrative of the story. So while I was really enjoying the story, I was definitely struggling to get through it because of these issues and therefore didn't consume it in a, a way that felt natural to me for the pacing and those letter combination removals very regularly threw me out of the story. There was just something that wasn't quite as complex about this story as I thought it could be. There was a lot of threads that just came together easily that I felt should have been more difficult. but. In general, I did enjoy this. The next book that I read in the month of August is Amada by Ernest Klein. Yes, I did get an art copy of this. No, I still hadn't read it at this point. I got the art copy for this back in 2015, right after I read Ready Player One. And then, yeah, some personal stuff happened and I just kind of took a step away from that. I shut down my blog for a while. So I've had an arc of this for ages. Always meaning to get around to it, just not quite being ready to write the review etc for this. But I read this and I give it four stars. I loved Ready Player One, I gave it five stars. But I am a, I wouldn't say avid gamer, but I do play video games quite regularly and I do watch my significant other play video games quite regularly. A lot of the YouTube that I watch outside of booktube is Let's Plays. So I really really love gaming so I really connected with that subject matter. I do not super super love sci-fi so there are a lot of like Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica etc references in this that I didn't quite get and I felt like while that didn't detract from my enjoyment I also didn't 
love this as much as I could have because of it. I really enjoyed this. I did find some of the plot to be a little too convenient. I did guess several twists quite early on and yeah there were some there were some things that I didn't agree with in the way that the plot direction was taken but overall if you liked Ready Player One I would still recommend that you pick this up. This story follows a young man as he is daydreaming one day out the window of his high school and suddenly he spots an alien spaceship from his favourite video game at the window where it really shouldn't be. And the story goes from there. And the next thing that I read in the month of August was Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore by Matthew J. Sullivan, which I unfortunately gave two stars. The title and the cover for this I really enjoyed and I really liked the premise that was presented by the synopsis in which this was a patron of a bookstore commits suicide and leaves a puzzle for his favourite employee to solve to understand why he did what he did. I really went into this for the treasure hunt puzzle aspect and I didn't get as much of it anyway near as much as I would have liked. The suicide aspect of it is of course quite dwelled on but it is also quite graphically dwelled on so I do want to give a content slash trigger warning for that if that is something that you struggle with. Don't read this. Like if, if you struggle with the topic of suicide and depression as a thing just this is not a book that you should be reading. I felt like this ended up being two books meshed together because they have a conjoining storyline and I feel like each storyline was written in a very different tone and a very different way so I had a lot of trouble when the timelines would shift uh, adjusting to the, the tone and the story I didn't particularly enjoy this book and again while I thought the initial premise sounded really good what it turned into was not what I requested this book for. This turned into like a murder mystery puzzle hunt taking a very far back seat slash family saga secrets. Very much not what I signed up for and while I didn't hate the direction that the story went I did find that the timeline switching was very jarring and it definitely threw me out of the reading experience on a number of occasions. The next thing that I read in the month of August was Books That Changed My Life, Reflections by a Hundred Authors, Actors, Musicians and Other Remarkable People by Beth Ann Patrick which I gave three stars. This is a collection of very short like one or two page essays by a hundred different people about the books that changed the direction of their life. So a lot of authors were talked about the books that inspired them to write, a lot of CEOs read books that you know inspired change in their lifestyle that led to where they are now. I felt like you would get more out of this book if you knew who the majority of these people were. A lot of uh, the issues that I had with this book are because they gave you the book title and the author and sometimes like the sentence that made them click but they never described anything else about the book they just talked about how they had changed because of it. And while I find that a very interesting subject, I found it much more inspiring from the people who I already knew who they were. So it was more of a, oh okay, so that's why you chose to do this and then this. So yeah, I found this book interesting, but I could have easily put it down at any point and not picked it up again and been perfectly content to do so. The next thing that I read in the month of August was Thorn by Intisa Kahanani. I'm sure that I probably butchered that name so I'm going to apologise for that now and just say that I will probably never get that quite correct and I am very sorry. I ended up giving this book three stars. 
I felt the same way about this book that I felt about A Thousand Nights, except I knew that this was a standalone. I felt that the beginning was a really nice, long, slow build up to a very quick not quite solid ending. There were a lot of relationships in this book that I felt could have benefited from some more elaboration. There was a friendship that the main character in this book made in like a 30 minute period that becomes quite a big plot point and yeah. This book follows a young princess as she journeys to another kingdom to marry the prince there and during the journey there a countess that has been sent along with her, I'm not entirely sure what her correct title is, a, a noble woman who is sent along with her who does a deal so that they are magically swapped identities against the princess's wishes. I really enjoyed this but I found that the ending became uh, very convenient and there was, there was some like more questioning that I would like to have gone on and everyone kind of just accepted that this is what had happened and instead of being like, oh shit, wait what? <laughs> so I did really enjoy this story and I do plan to check out more of this author's works but this is not the best work. The next thing that I read in the month of August was Haven by Catherine Bogle which I gave two stars. This story annoyed me. This is a story about a young princess who's third in line for the throne and then her father, mother and brothers are murdered so she becomes queen. She has a magic ability of some such where she cannot die. She can't die by drowning, she can't die by being shot with an arrow or having a throat cut, etc. She just, she heals everything. She heals straight back up and is fine. The main thing that annoyed me about this particular storyline is I found all of the characters very insanely naive and there was several points where arguments would break out and then at the end of the argument when the queen or whoever had gotten their way where everyone would just come together and hug and they'd just be like, I'm so sorry, I, I didn't mean to yell at you. And it's just like, that is not realistic. I'm sorry, but it's just not. It's not realistic. At least from my perspective, it's not. There was an issue with this story where there was a sexual assault and I felt that that was very glossed over, like it was confronted and spoken about but very briefly and was a little too easily forgiven for my feelings um and yeah there was a lot of like but you're the queen you can't put yourself in harm's way you can't fight in the battles and it's just like the woman literally cannot die just let her go do the thing i'm sorry but it felt really dumb that they were being like but no, we can't risk you being hurt. And she, it's just like, she's going to be fine. She, she will feel a little bit of pain, but she is going to be fine. Absolutely perfectly fine. So yeah, that one annoyed me a little bit. The next thing that I read in the month of August was Dear Mr. You by Mary Louise Parker, which I also gave two stars. So I didn't have a great streak here, guys. Dear Mr. You is a, a collection of letters and a like a memoir for Mary Louise Parker, who I had no idea who she was until I looked her up. Um, what really attracted me about this was that these were all letters that she had written throughout various stages of her life to the, the people that were important to her, like thanking them for certain things or expressing her anger over how some things were handled, etc. It's hard to critique someone else's letter writing because there is no real sense of narrative. but for someone who was collecting letters through the various stages of their life, I honestly felt like there wasn't a lot of growth in this and again I feel really critiquing someone else's life but I read this and this is how I feel about it so I'm sorry, everyone is just gonna have to deal with the fact that we're all uncomfortable about this. I felt like 
these letters didn't show a lot of the growth that the author went through. Like, she felt the same way about certain people the entire time. And I was unsure how the letters for this were actually chosen because it felt like some of them weren't important. And I'm sure they are to the author, but because I don't know her and enough about her life, like, I think this would be a great companion book to read with, like, a full detailed history of the author's life. Like, if certain people were mentioned and you knew that that letter corresponded with that person, that could be very interesting. But because there were never, um, really any names used, like, there were only one or two, like, actual people named and spoken about who you could, you know, find out more about and how their relationship was. Like, she talked about old boyfriends and best friends that she had lost, but she didn't mention any of them by name, which I'm sure, you know, was done for privacy reasons. The sorting of this book felt very, um, odd to me. And being who I am, I felt very frustrated with the fact that this book, even though it is titled Dear Mr. You, dealt solely with the influence that men had over this woman's life. She never really mentioned her mother or any of the other female influences throughout her life, of which I assume there are many. This felt very odd and strange to me as a woman who would rather uplift the women that had an influence on their life rather than talk about the men that have influenced my life. I don't know. It's just this book and I were not for each other. We will move on. The next thing that I read in the month of August was The Aeronauts Win Last by Jim Butcher. I gave this four stars. I have read and loved all of Jim Butcher's previous works. The Codex Alera series of which there are six. I think I gave all of them four or five stars. Loved it. That's a fantasy series. And then I've also got all of the current Dresden files that have been released. Also have read and loved all of those, but those are urban fantasy, and this is Jim Butcher's, at least as far as I'm aware, first foray into sci-fi. And again, I am not the world's biggest sci-fi fan. I don't read a lot of sci-fi. I don't, I don't consume a lot of sci-fi stuff. Um, just because I find it can get a little bogged down in the scientific details. And yeah, I would rather just be like, it's magic, I'll accept it, whatever. I don't always need to know how stuff works. And while this was a really cool, like, sci-fi fantasy blend, I did still find that I got a little bogged down in this. I was never entirely sure how their world was constructed. Like, I never got the hang of that. Um, which made this story sometimes very difficult to consume because at the beginning of each chapter it's titled the... it's got the location and the date. But while I did struggle with the world building, I did enjoy Jim Butcher's writing style as usual. I did have that disconnect so I wasn't as in tune with it as I normally would be. I loved all of the characters in this. I was never like reading someone being like, Ugh, this person again. I, ne I never felt the urge to skip anyone or their chapters. And there was a species of talking cats in this, and they are hilarious and I love them. This follows a bunch of perspectives, one of the primary ones being a ship captain, he's an airship captain, and his, at the beginning of the novel, his airship is damaged and the only way that he can get the repairs for this is to take a very dangerous secret mission and take a bunch of other people to try and locate and discover an instigator of a war happening between the captain and these other people's colony and an another separate colony. So yes, I Really, really enjoyed this, and I will definitely be picking the next one up whenever it's released. The next thing that I read was Water So Deep by Nicole Giles, which I also gave to stars. This book was sold as a mermaid story. It was packaged as such, 
it was described as such. But this was a romance and what I assume is going to develop into a love triangle. And again, I also thought that this was only a standalone. It wasn't marketed as the beginning of a series, as far as I recall. This follows a young woman as she struggles with the knowledge that around her 17th, 18th birthday, I don't quite remember which birthday it is, she will have to forsake all of the family that she currently lives with because she is adopted and she discovers that she was like a changeling or a half-breed mermaid left on land uh, because she cannot survive from when she is born until the 17th or 18th birthday she cannot survive in the water so she is left to be raised with this family and so she is struggling with the knowledge that she will turn into a mermaid and not be able to come back and live the life that she currently has on land. This story had a lot of elements. I feel too many elements. You could have taken out one or two of these storylines and not have it affect the story in this current book. Whether that will become relevant in the next book, I won't ever know because I don't plan to read it. But I definitely felt that there was a storyline in here that could have been removed and had no consequences on the actual story. I grew really frustrated with the romance in this book. Again, you can tell it will become a love triangle later. But I felt that the main character and the person that she was having romantic interactions with were very frustrating with their interactions. They were very yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. She kept being like, I want to live my life to the fullest while I have it and then being like oh but then I'm gonna hurt this person when I leave I'm gonna stop speaking to him randomly for no reason and then not talk to him about it like she could have just put it down as hey I'm potentially gonna go to college soon and I don't want to get attached to someone here that I'm just gonna have to break things off with like she never came up with a reason and so the guy like she just kind of left him on the hook and I don't agree with that behavior so he would just keep showing up being like hey I like you and I'm I'm pretty sure that you like me too oh shit you're mad at me for no reason I better grovel and do whatever I need to do to make you happy and like me again so didn't like that there was a very detailed sexual assault in the beginning of this story so warnings if you are not into that be aware of it um, and yeah there was a real dickhead that showed up who I guarantee the main character is gonna end up having romantic feelings for in the the next books or whatever and I'm not here for it I'm just this guy is a real dickhead he's a stalker and I'm not okay with that putting it out there the next thing that I read was Tasty, The Art and Science of What We Eat by John McQuaid, which I gave three stars. This book is about the food that we eat, why we evolved to eat the foods that we did, how we evolved because of the availability of foods, how we have affected like plants evolutions etc for our food purposes. When I requested this, I'm not sure if I was aware or not or if at some point in my head it just morphed into this will be about making food and the science of why certain things interact with each other which I thought was more of like I thought there was going to be like more of a why certain cultures use certain ingredients kind of thing which it wasn't so it was still very interesting but a lot of this was kind of basic and as a self-professed science nerd I did know a lot of this stuff already. There was some very interesting things in here, things I highlighted and saved and talked about with other people. Like I found out one of the reasons that my significant other doesn't like tomatoes is because tomatoes are part of the nightshade family and they were at one point potentially poisonous to humans so they have a genetic memory of this is a bad food this tastes bad because 
people that ate this died. Um, so I felt that that was very, very interesting. And it was good to know that people just don't dislike foods just because. Like, there are evolutionary reasons for why we eat the foods we eat. It's one of the reasons that I don't love eggplant. Again, it's part of the nightshade family. So somewhere in my timeline, I don't know where, someone in my family ate eggplant and it did not go well for them. So that was that was really interesting to learn and understand about us. But again, I did kind of want more discussions of the growing and then the, the creation of food. Like we did talk about why North and South America are really into spicy foods. The answer, we don't really know. There are some hypotheses, but we haven't fully tested that. So yeah, I did really enjoy this. I found it informative in places and it had a lot of interesting discussions and social commentaries about why we as a society are addicted to sugar and salt and what it does to us internally and the chemical reactions that it creates. So this I enjoyed but didn't give me a hundred percent of what I wanted. And the final thing that I finished in August was the Beast Garden by Kate Forsyth, which I gave four stars. This was a really difficult book for me to read at the time, just because while I was reading it, all of the stuff that was going on over in America with Charlottesville and the racially charged tension and the neo-Nazi protests, etc. This story follows a young woman and a young man. One of them is Jewish, one of them is not. During the Nazi occupation of Germany and then through the end of World War II. So a lot of the similarities with how we treat people now and how the Nazis treated the Jews back then. It's very distressing for me to read and was very difficult but also very powerful. There was some things in here that I disagreed with and I know that having read Kate's previous books, she does do a lot of research into this. She is very aware of how these things happen and why they happen and most of her stories are factually based. But there was a few decisions in here by one particular character that I did not agree with and like regardless of how it turned out at the end I very highly disagreed with it and I felt that some things came a little too easily because of those choices and that a, a character was accepting things that I felt was out of character for that person and whether both of these main characters are based on real people I don't know I haven't done the research into that yet. It was very difficult but very powerful but yeah I did severely disagree with certain things in this book. I need to put out a warning for sexual assault and torture etc. If you know what the Jews went through during the Nazi occupation and World War II and if, if any of that makes you uncomfortable to read about, but you're still interested, just be aware that a lot of that is shown in very graphic detail. And while I feel it's done for the right reasons and is very impactful, I want you guys to be aware of that. All right, guys, that was everything that I read in the month of August. So in the month of August, I read a total of 5,195 pages. I also read about 25% of another arc called Equilibrium by C.S. Seeley, but I will talk more about that in my September wrap up. So I read, I think that's 682 pages or something. It's, it's quite a big book, so I think I read maybe another 100, 200 pages on top of that. So yeah, not a great reading month for me, but these are why we do those arcs and my entire reason for doing this to get rid of a bunch of arcs went very poorly because of course as soon as I finished a bunch of arcs I went and requested a bunch of arcs and I got approved for almost the exact same amount of arcs that I read this month. <sighs> Impulse control Rochelle.
get your shit together. So I had a mildly successful arc August. I was very successful in the number of arcs that I read. I was middling on their ratings and I was very unsuccessful in getting the number of arcs that I need to read down. So a very middling month for me. I hope you guys all had a great reading month in the month of August and I wish you the best of luck for September even though it's nearly half over at this point. I'm sorry that this is so late. That is everything for my wrap up. I hope you guys have a magical day. Bye!